Hey folks! In this video we're going to make a Weeping Willow wire tree. We're going to need to start with some wire. Any wire will do really, but uh, I got this stuff at the craft store because I had coupon and it had a sale. You can always find this on sale somewhere or they usually have coupons that make it cheaper. If not, any wire that you can bend easily enough will do. This 20 gauge wire might be a little thick, so look for something like a 24 gauge, probably easier to work with. We need some pliers. The cutting ones are pretty much the most important. These, you can replace it with your fingers, but you're probably gonna wear your fingertips. For which I have a glove. It will help not hurt your fingertips from doing so much twisting. And in this case, we're going to bejew our tree, so we're gonna need some, in this case, peridot chips. But any pre-drilled bead will do. Some reference material is also good. A ruler to wrap your wire around. And let's get started. We'll start by wrapping our wire, in this case around this ruler, which is 12 inches long, which is the length I calculate for what I'm gonna need. And uh, be careful so you don't get tangled up like I just did. This end only. Now that we have a whole bunch of wire that looks like this, we can start stringing the beads to make the leaves for the, for the tree. For the weeping willow leaves, I'm going to put a little bead down here, hold it in place, mind the direction you turn it, it's very important so things don't come unraveled later on. I like to use the pliers to very gently turn it, so I'm gonna turn it three times, and then put another one, turn on the same direction, another bead, I'm going to do about five or seven beads per branch. The last one I'm going to do seven twists. And that's going to be one branch. Now let's make a whole bunch more. This is going to take a while. Much, much later. This took literally hours to make, so pace yourself, take a few breaks, and have a lot of patience. But now comes the fun part. Now we'll separate them in bunches. In this case I used three, four, and five bunches. Then we'll take one of these bunches, and we'll put them together like this. You hold each wire end separate, hold it by here, by, by where they connect, and then you twist. Remember the direction you twisted the wires to hold the gemstones in place, because if you twist the other way you're gonna unravel there. So twist that same direction. I'm gonna give just four twists on this one, and then set aside, and then do the next one. You want to twist it very nice and tight. Now our tree will begin to take shape and... Uh, as I was saying, now our tree is going to begin to take shape. Just a second, I need to put my gloves on. 
These will form the branches of our tree. So what do we do with them is we're going to twist them all the way to where they would connect to another branch. And then we stop there, set it aside. We take another one and again we twist it all the way up to where we think it would connect to another branch of the tree. The reference again. So whipping willows, they are kind of scraggly. Don't be afraid to get creative and a little bit random with your branches. In the end, if it looks good and you're not trying to copy a specific tree, that's all that matters. Now, these are two branches that are going to intersect and become one big branch. Now where the leaves go doesn't matter much, we're going to make them pretty later. For now, this is what matters, putting together the branches. Once it starts getting at a certain thickness, you might find that you need some more heavy-duty holding power for this. Alright, now I, here I made a mistake. I want this split to happen a little higher up. So I'm going to backtrack it a little. That's normally not very good, but it's not the end of the world. Alright, we can start thinking about the roots of the tree now. Some people like to make complex roots that split into several other parts. I like to keep my roots simple because in the next step when we put this in a little pot, uh, most of the roots are going to be hidden anyway, so I just stick to the ones that are going to be visible. All right, we can start styling our tree now. It helps to have an understanding of how trees grow and how they work, but uh, it's ultimately up to your artistic sensibilities and what pleases you aesthetically. You could leave it like this, it's already a good tree. <laughs> but we're making a whipping willow. This is more or less it. The main thing to keep in mind when styling the willow tree is gravity. You have to imagine that the branches, they are heavy with leaves and gravity is pulling them down. So if you give him the impression that they're drooping heavy with leaves, it makes the tree more realistic. I'm still gonna go over this and do a few more touch-ups a few more times, but that's after the next step. Some people like to put them on top of rocks and make the roots look like they're grabbing the rocks, and that looks very good. But this one, I'm going to put it on a little pot. So it's gonna look like a little bonsai tree, hopefully. I'm going to use some coarse gravel as filler first, and then some fine granules for the rest. This is all going to be epoxied in place, but first let's style the roots a little. Five minutes later. A few 
few moments later. I like to let it sit overnight and then tomorrow I'll look at it with fresh eyes and see if there's anything that I need to change on the design of the tree before calling it done. Hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards.